G'day, Michael here. This video is just a simple one to show my uh, laser arrangement here. I've just added a few new little bits and bobs, tied it up a little bit. I've set up a little, an extension to the USB cable um, with a wireless networking device. I'll put it on the back of the uh, monitor here because it's obviously the most prominent point on the device. It gives me a better signal for my Wi-Fi arrangement. This Dell monitor is a fairly low resolution monitor. I think it's like uh, 1280 by 1024 thereabouts. But it has a nice little feature of bringing a USB connection from the computer out to the side here. So I use this as a receiver for my cordless keyboard and mouse. And also, I use it uh, as a socket for my a USB drive. I've simply got the power cord brought up through here just so I don't have a lead dangling on the floor uh, when I'm moving the trolley around. There's UPS in the bottom here. That UPS is not really active as a UPS. It's just acting as a surge protector. This is a handy piece of duct work that's come with the machine. I don't know how long it's going to last, but for the moment it's working quite well. It allows me to fit the, the duct to the back of the machine. And it can be bent and placed any way you like, and it largely holds its shape. So it's quite a handy little uh, device. This is, I don't know how well that shows, this is the air assist pump. Now that uh, is just to give assist gas to the laser tip. I put a, uh, a nipple here for the compressed air supply to my compressor. And I've kind of got this hose jemmied onto that. It's good enough for, for low pressure. But if I'm using a higher airflow for cutting, I can hook, hook it up to a main you know, 28 CFM compressor. These are both the coolant hoses. Now, I've simply got this stainless steel pot. It seems to be working quite well for the power of the machine that I've got here. Because between, obviously, um, the low output of the machine, plus the fact that the, the laser's usually... You know, only operating partially, it can't, cannot be on full time for any great extent of periods. This comes up to like oh, a warm, lukewarm at the hottest. It's not, not a hot, it doesn't get hot. So the amount of area, surface area on this stainless steel pot seems to be enough to dissipate any energy generated from the laser. It's only a 50 watt unit. Well, the wattage is actually quite a fuzzy uh, measurement I've found. Um, 50 watts is what they specified the machine at. It says on the tube, 50 watts peak, uh, agreement, 45 watts. Well, I agree that it's 40 watts, so that's, that's how I'm going to call it. It's really a 40-watt machine with the ability to, to peak out at 50, kind of. All right, so that's the back of the machine. Rotate it around. Now the, the side of the machine, I've got obviously the connections in and out for the various uh, requirements of the laser itself. And I'm using a network connection to the host computer. I find network works better than the USB. I also tried using the, the file reader uh, USB socket here, but I found the network seems to be the smoothest and I'm controlling everything directly from RD Works. The Dell box is actually sitting underneath here, I don't know how well that shows up. There's uh, the PC base in there, and I've made myself a couple of little drawers here, just for knickknacks and stock. So, yeah, the whole thing's on wheels, I can move around to suit myself. Okay, you, you can see I've got the cord, cordless uh, keyboard here, and a cordless mouse. Now the mouse has to be free to move so it's not stuck on. But the keyboard I've actually stuck on with some double sided tape so as to make it you know, safe for me to open the lid without it falling off. Now internally, I've currently got um, like the, the cylinder engraving and cutting, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's a device for handling cylinders and like rolling pins and that kind of thing. Um, I use it a lot for engraving uh, rolling pins, that's what I use it mostly for. But I've also started doing photographics and things like that. Alright, now that's that. I'm using Linux on my host computer. It's also got Windows XP and I'm using, 
I'm leaving Windows XP on it because the, the Linux installation is still under probation with RD Works. Although I've got to say that I've had about 30 hours of use out of the RD Works on the Linux installation now, and I've had a very good success with that. I might just rotate that monitor around and show you. There is only one flaw I've found with the Linux installation using RD Works. Uh, RD Works is not native to Linux, so it's it's a bit of a um, where are we? It's coming up now. Oh, now let's do that. The only one flaw I've found is zooming in seems to be okay, but zooming out you get to a point where the aspect ratio gets messed up somehow. I don't understand if there's a way of re resolving that, but for the moment it's working beautifully for everything I needed to do. Um, yeah, that's that. The software has been working perfectly otherwise, I've had no you know, lockups or anything. Um, the reason why I'm using Linux is because of the vast range of open source software. Things like Inkscape and GIMP work actually better on Linux because the extra software that comes with it is very, very um, easily obtainable. Whereas on a Microsoft or Apple installation, you've got to scratch around and find all the bits and bobs together to make you know, all the extra features work. And I'm not sure you can actually get all the extra features. If I type in the search here, say Inkscape, get results back that have anything to do with Inkscape. It's like this fonts, um, create shared resources for use by various programs. And this this is um, this is a package that's designed to work GIMP, uh, Inkscape, Blender, Cinepaint, and a couple, a couple of other packages. Our oh, Inscribus, which is a desktop publishing program. Uh, includes brushes and all sorts of bits and bobs. Anyhow, regardless of this particular piece of software, it's easily available to me. All the extra bits and bobs that can be put together with Inkscape for argument's sake is available with a simple search. We searched, say, vector. Let's say you want to do a vector. And you can see there's a number of packages that have anything to do with vectors. So you can see that there's uh, many tools very easily available. All I have to do is tick a box and say I want it installed, and it'll go off and install it for me. So this is what I mean by the software is much more easily available under Linux than it is in, un, under Windows. I'll just reboot into Windows. I'll boot up Windows. It works. Now the Linux installation can read the Windows drive, the Windows drive can't read the Linux installation drives. Um, that's okay, I've got shortcuts on the Linux installation to this same uh, folder, so I've got access to the same file. So regardless of whether I'm running Linux or Windows, I'm using exactly the same files in exactly the same location, so I'm not happy to copy things around between uh, boots. Okay. Now, Windows XP doesn't have that zooming error. So that's the only difference I've noticed with the RD works on Linux versus on Windows. But of course, on Windows, there's far less software available uh, in the open source world. Um, than there is on, on a Linux installation. The other thing I don't have to worry about, Linux is keeping itself up to date and modern. XP is basically an abandoned system now, so it's going to be steadily, uh, well it is already abandoned, and there'll be a point where I certainly can't have it on the internet because I can't protect it. Well hopefully that was some, of some interest to you. Um, feel free to like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, make a donation. I've got the donation tab enabled there somewhere. Um, and also, if you have an idea for a video you'd like to see, feel free to mention something in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Bye now.